You know, it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be hard to become a better saver. In fact, the best savers are people that just put their savings on autopilot. And here's the seven places that they autopilot their money into. Let's go for a walk and we'll talk about it. Okay, the first place is um, make sure that you're paying off your minimum credit card balance. Uh, and that might seem unusual coming from me, coming from a financial advisor. You know, shouldn't you be paying off your entire credit card uh, payment every month? And I'll talk more about this later, but to start, make sure you're paying off the minimum balance. And the reason for that is, at least here in the United States, your credit score is largely influenced by the timeliness of, of the payments of, of your re responsibilities, your bills. And it doesn't take much to screw that up. In fact, you know, the credit, the credit scoring agencies allow you to miss just one out of 100 payments and still keep an excellent rating. They say that if you miss two out of 100 payments, and remember, 100 payments for a credit card, you know, that's over eight years, right? So if you miss just two payments over an eight year period, your credit score is going from excellent to fair. Uh, and what that means is any mortgages, any car loans, any future debt is gonna be at a higher interest rate. And if you miss three payments over a 100 month period, uh, your credit score is actually poor uh, here in the United States. So the first place I want you to think about is, is paying off those, those monthly balances. Quit using your credit card for things that you don't need. Uh, if you're only paying the minimum balance, but make sure you do that. Of course, the next thing you need to, to spend is, is what your life necessities are. And when I say necessities, I mean necessities, right? I'm talking about your rent. I'm talking about food. Uh, I'm talking about keeping your car running. Uh, just the bare necessities that it takes, you know, roof over your head, food on the table, and a car to get to your job. So that, that's the second thing that I think you should be spending your money on and putting money towards. The next place is an emergency fund. Hopefully you already have an emergency fund, but if you don't, that would be the next place that I would, I would focus on. And for most people, we should have three to six months in our emergency fund. This way, if we lose our job, we're, you know, we can still pay our credit cards on time, we can still pay our rent, we can still put food on the table uh, while we're looking for our next job. So it just makes sense uh, to have this emergency fund. You know, shockingly, uh, one third of Americans uh, have less than $1,000 uh, saved, so they really don't have an emergency fund. And almost half of Americans don't have five thousand dollars, right? Which, you know, when you when you think about it, you know, that's probably for most Americans less than six months of an emergency fund if they're fortunate to have that. So, the next place is an emergency fund. Um, make sure you've got at least three months, preferably six months, maybe even a little bit more. Okay, the next place I'm going to say is a place that you can get a guaranteed. There's not many guarantees in life, and. As a financial advisor, I avoid using that word, but this is a place you can get a guaranteed 100% return. Before we go there though, I have a favor to ask. Uh, if you're enjoying this video, hit the, give me a thumbs up, hit the like button. It really does help the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm. Find other viewers like yourself that these videos can help. Also think about subscribing if you're a regular watcher. And also uh, think about leaving me a comment. I love reading your comments. Okay, so what is this, uh, this guaranteed 100% return? And there's definitely an asterisk by it, but that's just in your 401k, if you work for a company that offers a 401k with a match, you know, make sure you put in at least up to the amount of the match. Now I say it's a guaranteed return, but you know, oftentimes you've got to be with that company for four, five, six years until your company's money is your money. But as long as you're planning on staying there, that's the next place uh, that I would put your money. Okay, uh, and then the, the following place is, is the credit cards. And we talked about that earlier. I talked about making the minimum payment, but you know, most credit cards in the United States, the interest rate's over 15%. In fact, you know, many, many credit cards are 24, 25, 26% uh, percent interest, sometimes even higher. Uh, so pay, pay off that, that high cost debt. And you know, there's really two approaches for paying off credit cards. Uh, and this is an approach that Dave Ramsey gets credit for. Uh, and he calls it the snowball effect, which is paying off the smallest balance first, 
really so you get momentum going, right? It feels good to pay off that credit card and get it out of the way and know, okay, that one's done. And Dave calls that the snowball effect, you know, in, in a, uh, on a bright sunny day like what I have here today, you know, the small snowballs are gonna melt uh, before the big snowballs. So that's why Dave uses that term. The other uh, strategy that Dave shares is what he calls the avalanche effect. Sorry for the noise, there's a uh, volleyball game going out on behind me. Spring has sprung uh, where I'm at and people are getting out and enjoying the beautiful weather. I hope you are as well. But uh, Dave's avalanche uh, strategy is really pay off the loan, the credit card that has the highest interest rate because you'll get the most bang for your dollar by doing that. Whichever way works for you, I will say that there's been some studies done, academic studies that show when people pay off, completely pay off a credit card, they, there's momentum from that and there's good, good feelings from that. Uh, and, and that encourage you to, is to continue doing it. So you know yourself best, uh, you do what's, what's best for you. Okay, so after the credit cards, the next is looking at your retirement accounts. Um, and before I go into, you know, which accounts I think you should put money into or consider putting money into, I want to share with you that uh, the average savings rate in the United States is four and a half percent. That's not a whole lot of money. You know, the average salary in the United States is fifty thousand dollars. And if you put five percent in over 40 years, this is a long time. At the end of that period, yes, you're going to have six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But 40 years from now, if inflation is two and a half percent, 40 years from now, that's going to feel like $250,000. And that's going to be a very, very lean retirement. So I encourage you to save, save more. That's what, this, that's what this, this video is about is how do you save more? How do you make that happen? Okay, so in your retirement accounts, what I want, to, want you to think about is balancing future you with current you right and and yes it's fun to spend money but you also want to make sure that future you is going to look back and and thank who you are today so i've got two suggestions there and i should say none of this is financial advice i don't know your situation so unfortunately i cannot give you financial advice but i can give you some things to think about i can share some resources where you can do your own homework and that's really the spirit of this video okay let's keep going so with your retirement, there's really three types of accounts. There's accounts where um, you're gonna get a tax break today, like a traditional 401k, a traditional IRA. You get a tax break today, it's gonna grow tax-free, and as long as you're over uh, 59 and a half, when you take the money out, um, there's no penalty, but you are gonna have to pay ordinary income tax on that. So a lot of people put the vast majority of their retirement money in a regular 401k or a regular IRA. I caution you against doing that because future you is gonna say, oh my goodness, what have we done here? Every dollar you take out for distributions is gonna be taxed, right? So I encourage you to think about three buckets. The first bucket is that uh, tax, tax me later bucket, let's call it that. The second bucket is a tax me as I go, that's an account like at the bank, uh, where you're paying uh, your taxes on the interest that you earn every year. And then the third bucket is a tax me now, but don't tax me later bucket. And those are the Roth versions of your 401ks, the Roth version of your IRAs, where you don't get the tax break day one, but later on when you take the money out, you can take it out tax-free as long as you're over 59 and a half. So I encourage you to think about balancing all three of those how much you should have in each of those bucket is is outside of the scope of a video like this but i do encourage you to work with a fee only financial advisor so that they can help you uh, determine that you can find a fee only financial advisor just by googling uh, the term fee only financial advisor okay so that's the sixth area in the seventh area uh, after you've filled up all of these buckets after you've thought about future you then i want you to think about current you and I want you to think about guilt-free spending. This is money you've, you've taken care of all of the necessities and this is money that you get to spend and go have fun and don't have any guilt for it. And if you, if you enjoy spending money, I know you're gonna enjoy uh, this video up here where I talk about average income in retirement and this video down here where I talk about five reasons to retire as soon as you can.